Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorials. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform single cell ATAC sequencing data analysis. So, ATAC six stands for a C for transposes accessible chromatin sequencing. ATAC seq method was first published in 2013. It can be used to map accessible chromatin across tissues or conditions to generate epigenomic profiles and retrieve nucleosome positions, identify important transcription factors, and to generate occupancy profiles of transcription factors. So in 2015, two publications reported how to perform single-cell ATAC seq. So let's see how the single-cell ATAC seq protocol works. We know that DNA are compacted into closed chromatin. In order to fit within the small space of cell nucleus, only cell type specific gene coding fragments and also non coding RNA fragments are kept as the open chromatin to allow transcription. In ataxic hyperactive transposes TM5, was used to access the open chromatin. Sequencing adapters were loaded onto TN5. TN5 transposes not only fragments open chromatin, but also integrates adapter sequence into open chromatin. Integrated adapters could be used to amplify the sequence of open chromatin for downstream um, sequencing and uh, data analysis. In ATAC seq features are not genes, features are peaks. The peaks are corresponding to open chromatin. If buckles were used to label individual nucleus, then we could have ATAC sequencing data on a single cell resolution. So here is a very brief introduction about a single cell ATAC sequencing data connection. So for today's video tutorial, I'm going to use the online PBMC single cell ATAC seq tutorial. We can download the matrix data, the metadata, and the the fragment file and also the index for the fragment file from here. You can see here, I downloaded the files already. So we can go ahead to perform the analysis in R. First, we need to note all the packages. Signac is required. For ATAC-seq data analysis, we also need SURAT under the human genome information and the human gene information from Ensemble database. So let's note the libraries. Now we are ready to uh, read the data into R. First, let's read the count matrix data into R. This is a H5 file, so we can use the read 10 times H5 function. So you can see we have the counts data here. It is a large DGC matrix data. Let's have a look at the counts. So you can see um, So you can see the columns names are cell buckles, the row names are peaks. It shows uh, which 
chromosome and the start and the end position of this fragment. The value in the counts represents how many TN5 binding sites. So now we can uh, use the counts and also the fragment files to create a chromatin assay. Because the data was generated from human blood samples, so we are going to use the uh, human genome HG19. So we can go ahead to create a chromatin assay. So you can see here we have a chromatin assay containing 8,000. 728 cells. So now we can read the metadata in. So we have the count matrix and the metadata. We can create a thread object. The counts are chromatin assay. We create a thread object as PBMC. So you can see we have PBMC thread object now. So let's have a look at the metadata of PBMC thread object. So you can see we have the barcode, the run counts for the peaks, and features for the peaks. We also have uh, some information down here, for example, the blacklist region fragment, peak region fragments, this information, we need them to perform quality control analysis. So next, we can annotate the data using Ensemble Human Gene Database. Because the data was mapped to human genome 19, so we need to change it to the UCSC style. Now we can annotate the data. So we don't need the counts, chromatin assay, metadata, and annotations anymore. We just need to keep the PBMC thread object for the rest of the analysis. So we can remove those data. So now we have our PBMC thread object. We can perform the quality control analysis. If you have looked at the online uh, tutorial, currently the tutorial uses five metrics to assess the data quality. The first one is the nuclear cell binding pattern. Then we can compute the nucleosome signal score per cell. The second one is the uh, transcriptional start site enrichment score. This matrix data could be calculated by the TSS enrichment function. The matrix data for the peak region fragments it's in the data already, so we don't need to calculate it. So we can use the violin plot function to have a look at the peak region fragments. Let's zoom in. You can see we have the matrix data for peak region fragments. So the fourth uh, matrix data that we use to perform quality control is the fraction of fragments in peaks. We can obtain this matrix data by dividing peak region fragments with the past filters. Let's run this function. So the last matrix data is the ratio rates in genomic blackness region. The blacklist region for the human genome was included in the SIGNAC package. So we can add the blacklist ratio in peaks into the metadata. So now we have all the matrix data to perform quality control analysis. 
So we can use the uh, varying plot function to have a look all the matrix data. Let's zoom in. So you can see from the varying plot, for the nuclear um, signal, cells in this region are high quality cells. For the TSS enrichment score, cells in this region are high quality cells. And the total number of fragments in peaks, fraction of fragments in peaks, cells with the high blackness ratio should be removed because they are uh, low quality cells. So you can use your own parameter to perform the quality control. Normally we use cells in the high quality region, but for today's demonstration, in order to uh, produce the same cell pattern, I'm going to use the same parameters from the online tutorial. So this is the code. I copied from online tutorial, so we can use this quality control matrix to remove cells that are outer layers. So we performed the quality control. If we have a look at the PBMC object again, you can see now we only have 7060 cells. So we filled out the low quantity cells. Now we can perform data normalization and find the top features. So SIGNAC performs term frequency inverse document frequency for data normalization. Then we use the find the top features to find the top features. Here we use the minimum cutoff for the Q0, so we kept all the top features for the rest of analysis. So next we can run linear dimensional reduction. If you are familiar with the single cell RNA sequencing data analysis, this is a very similar function as run PCA in single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. So if we have a look at the correlation between sequence steps and the reduction method LSI, this is the reduction method for run SVD. So you can see from here, the first LSI component has strong correlation with the sequence steps. So in the following analysis, we will remove the first component. So now for the non-linear dimension reduction and the cell clustering, the analysis is the same as the single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. First, we run UMAP and remove the first LSI component. Next, we find the neighbors and uh, find the cell clusters. So now we are ready to see the cell clusters. Use the dim plot function. Let's uh, have a look at the cell clusters. We can zoom in. So we have 15 cell clusters in this data set. So I'm going to stop for today's video demonstration. In summary, I briefly introduced the single cell ATAC-seq to you. We use the human PBMC data set as an example to perform quality control, data normalization, dimensional reduction, and cell clustering. I hope my video can help you single cell ATAC sequencing data analysis. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button after you watched my video. Thank you. 
See you in my next video.